Debbie Grasham. <laughs> I'm Debbie Grasham, principal of the Upper School, and I want to welcome you to our 59th annual 7th grade Chase group. Shakespeare, who is often regarded as the greatest playwright in the English language, has left an indelible mark on literature and theater for centuries. He wrote his plays not just to be read, but to be performed. And tonight, our seventh graders have worked tirelessly to bring his timeless characters and stories to life. Through their dedication, creativity, and hard work, they have not only delved into the intricate languages and themes of Shakespeare's plays, but have also cultivated essential skills in teamwork, communication, and self-expression. So we're about to witness the result of that hard work. But first, I want to give a few thank yous before we begin. First, to Michael Solomon, manager of the JCC Theater. Thank you for being such a supportive partner, making tonight possible, and also running the lights. their Anne Frank play, which you may see at the stage looks a little different. All of the stuff for Anne Frank is all behind that, so please come out to support that when that comes out. Again, really promoting theater in our Jewish community. Okay, thank you to M. Wolf for running the sound and other support. Thank you to Shari Versadi for filming tonight's performance, a wonderful picture board you'll see, and a ton of other things to make tonight happen. for a ton of behind the scenes work to make tonight successful and really supporting everyone in this whole process. PTA teacher Stephanie Glitt providing additional support this whole week at JCC and really supporting with the staff. Woo! And for Angela Bart for over 20 years of lending CGA her professionalism and expertise and always being willing to roll with the unexpected. Above and beyond in so many ways, always being positive and encouraging for our students. Make sure to give our huge thank you amount of applause when we see her after. I really big thank you to all the parents of the seventh graders. You had to work to arrange transportation this week, talk to students, help them memorize the lines, and we see it, we support you, we thank you. And all of you for coming out and supporting tonight. Thank you, for real. Mind me, there's no flash photography. Our students are nervous enough, but they help me be blind as they speak. Um, if you do have any young children who are disruptive, then you just please take them out to the balcony, to the lobby. Um, and with that, thank you and enjoy the show. To me! 
and Hebrew speakers probably don't know what we're saying. Mother knows best, and mother agrees. Mer, mer on the wall, shall we speak Hebrew for them all? I don't want to do Hebrew, I just want the money from the <laughs> Take 
computer so I can in my constellation, myself and move to Hindi for my wife. Move it! <laughs> in good time, let him that moved your hither. Remove your hence. I knew you at first. You are immovable. Why, what's immovable? A joint stool. Alas, good Kate, I will not burden thee for no one be to be but young and less too light for such a swain as you to catch, and yet as heavy as my weight should be. Should be, should buzz, come come you wasp, I think you are too angry. If I be waspish, best be where I might stay. My remedy is at the pluck it out. I am the fool could find it where it lies. Who knows not where wasp is where to stay? It is tail. It is tongue. Who's tongue? Yours if you talk of tails. And so, farewell. Nay, hear you, Kate, and fear you, Kate, not so. I chafe you if I tarry. Let me go! <laughs> must and will have Catherine to my wife. <laughs> Why? 
white as snow, all flaxen was his pull. He is gone, he is gone, we cast away a moan. God have mercy on his soul. They would 
be better if they'll follow. If to do were as easy as to know what we're good to do, but this reasoning is not in the fashion to choose me a husband. Oh, me? The word choose? May I neither choose whom I would, nor abuse whom I dislike? So is the will of a living daughter curbed by the will of a dead father? Is it not hard, Marissa, that I cannot choose one, nor refuse none? Your father was an ever virtuous, and holy men, at their death, have good inspirations. Therefore, the lottery that he hath devised in these three chests of gold, silver, and lead, where also chooses the meaning, chooses you. But what warmth in their affection towards any of these princely suitors that already have come? Pray thee overname them, and as thou namest them, I will describe them. And according to my description, level up my affection. First, there is the Neapolitan prince. <laughs> Aye, that's a cult indeed, for he doth nothing but talk of his horse. <laughs> then there is the county palace. <laughs> he doth nothing but frown. He hears merry tales and smiles not. I fear he'll prove the weeping philosopher, being so full of unhindered sadness. In his youth, I'd rather be married to death's head with a bone in his mouth than either of these two. God defend me from these. <laughs> then, what do you think of Falconbridge, the young baron of England? You know I say nothing to him, for he understands not me, nor I him. How oddly is he suited. I think he bought his doublet in Italy, his round hose in France, his bonnet in Germany, and his behavior everywhere. <laughs> what do you the Scotch Lord, his neighbor? He hath a neighborly charity in him, for he borrowed money from the Englishman and swore he would pay him again if he was able. I think the Frenchman became his his surety under for a letter. You need not fear, ladies, to have any, any of these lords have acquainted me with their determinations, which is indeed to return to their home, and to trouble you with no more suit, unless you may be won by some of the other sort of your fathers and positions, depending on the casket. If I live to be as old as Sigula, I will die as chaste as Diana, unless I be obtained by the manner of my father's will. Romeo, and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. 
my only love, sprung from my only hate, too early seen unknown, and known too late. Prodigious birth is love to me, then I must love a loath enemy. What's this? What's this? Around my life even now, with one I dance with all. Juliet! Anon, anon, come, let's away. The strangers are all gone. Say 
what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. <laughs> me thought I was, there is no man can tell what. Me thought I was and me thought I had. But man is not a patch of fool. If he will offer to say what me thought I had, the eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen, man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream. <laughs> in the latter end of the play, before the Duke.
do I? Hmm. Now, hmm. how about rock, paper, scissors, shoot? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Yes! Hmm. To be or not to be? That is my question. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be? That is the question. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Let's fill it. I don't understand it. It was Greek to me. <laughs> Let me not be left alone. 
alone and let the nurses might sit up with you. For you have your hands full in this also sudden business. Good night, get me to bed and rest, for thou hast me. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint cold fear grows through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse? What should she do here? My dim soul seen, I need to act alone? Come, Violet. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then, tomorrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it, lie thou there. What if it be poison, which the friar suddenly hath ministered to have me dead? Lest in this marriage he should be dishonored, because he married me before to Romeo? I fear it is, and yet methinks it should not, for he hath still been trying to hold me in. Romeo, I come, this do I drink to thee. Your ally, 
my very friend, has got his mortal over on my behalf. Oh, Romeo! Romeo, great Mercutio's dead! This book begins the world, others must end. And now, Kibble, take the villain back again. Either thou, or I, or both, must go with him. Thou wretched boy, shall with him end. This shall determine that.
Lord. The spear of thy charm will let the angel of thou still serve. Tell him he doth us from his mother's room. Untie him with. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield, ye coward. I will not yield. Lay on your stuff and didn't beat him that first cry. Hold it up.
Oprah wants the boy to be called Cage in his court. Titania refuses to put the boy's mother, Titania, in France, and she tries to raise the boy, but his mother dies. Ladies, 
you. Those gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps the floor. They now perchance both quake and tremble here. When lions rough and wildest rage doth roar, oh that I, one snug the joiner, am a lion's mouth. Nor else no lions dare. For if I come in strife into this place, for a pity on my life. <laughs>
so good night unto you all. Give me your hands. If we be friends, and the robin shall restore our hands. in 20 minutes, and they did it. 